It is draft day in the NBA. Round number one of the 2024 NBA draft is tonight inside the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. We will get you set with everything you need to know. But Donnie, as we said early in the show, whether it's the NFL draft or any notable date on an offseason calendar for one of the big professional sports leagues, when you have something that stands out, activity starts to ramp up around the league. It's what we saw last night. Mikael Bridges traded from Brooklyn to the New York Knicks. In return, the Knicks sent back four unprotected first-round picks, another first-rounder in multiple other draft assets. Brooklyn then turned around and made another deal with Houston to stockpile a ton of picks and send them to the Rockets that the Rockets are hoping to use to lure a big-name player. Potentially, names like Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, those have already been floated. I bring this up, DRS, once again, because the Rockets, who were even 500 last year, 41 and 41, with a ton of talent on this team and a young nucleus under Ime Udoka in his first year in H-Town, now trying to bring in that big superstar to elevate their ceiling once again. Houston is slated to pick third tonight in the 2024 NBA draft. So... What do you make of everything that we have seen in the last 24 hours and how it sets the stage for the NBA draft this evening? It's interesting because, again, we don't have the big names of the draft that we typically would want. Say, okay, let's flip picks here. I want to get this guy number one or number two, but more down-the-line stuff, which is where the NBA usually operates. You're not stockpiling draft picks, so you can use all of those draft picks down the line. Like the NFL, you could probably say, like, hey, man, we got four first-round picks. We're really going to you know, go ham on this and get some starters. That's not the way the NBA works. You're stockpiling those draft picks so you can be a bad basketball team on the court, get a lot of high draft picks for yourself, Once those high draft picks turn into very good players, at least you think they're going to be good players, you flip those draft picks for established talent. And you're taking a look at the Rockets last year who really pushed the Golden State Warriors down the stretch to try to get into the playoffs. So this is a team next year with expectations of making into the playoffs. The only thing they're missing is not a lot of young talent coming onto the roster. Let's just say the number three overall pick. It's getting that true veteran superstar. And they go, all right, kids, follow me here. This is what we're going to do next to take this team to the next level. But having said that also, looping in the Phoenix Suns here, which we've been told multiple times by their owner, Matish Bia, look, I don't give a damn about picks here. I want superstars. These guys are good enough right. to win. We have to make some minor tweaks. I don't think those minor tweaks are like, yeah, you know what? I get rid of Durant or get rid of Booker. That was the whole MO is we need superstars. Now we just have to get the right coach and the right fit here. And I'm going to continue to flip these draft picks if I have them for established players. So that's the only interesting thing that they're looking towards Phoenix to poach one of Phoenix's players when Phoenix has always told us in the last what year, no, we're a superstar team. We're looking to add on, not make any changes from superstars leaving town. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see if any of these deals come to actually go through, if any of the rumored names are out there. What we need to know is the Rockets have a ton of draft assets and capital that could pretend uh, uh, present excuse me, an enticing offer to somebody around the NBA. Believe me, there will be so much NBA draft coverage on today's show. We showed you the full draft order ever so briefly. Let's highlight a couple of the things that you need to know. The Atlanta Hawks select number one overall. The Hawks, who finished 10th in the Eastern Conference and played a game in the play-in tournament, had a 3% chance to get that number one overall selection of which they did. The Pistons, who finished with the league's worst record for a second consecutive year, will draft fifth overall for a third consecutive NBA draft the ping pong balls never really favor Detroit Washington has picked number two we talked about the Rockets standing at number three the San Antonio Spurs who won the sweepstakes last year in a much more lucrative NBA draft to get Victor Wembanyama, have two top 10 picks fourth overall eighth overall Those are probably some of the big storylines just in the overall draft order DRS before we break down the prospects and the odds that follow suit. Yes, and also we have to understand something. Like as of yesterday, you're looking at the draft like, ah, you know what? The NBA cycle is sort of down right now. We saw J.J. Redick become a head coach here, but now you got those big trade moves last night. Who's to say we're not going to get any more of those type of trade deals before the NBA draft even starts for tonight? So a two-day affair here. Obviously, the Sports Grid Network is going to have the boys in studio and get you covered, but it does add to some intrigue here and some fuel to fire, which could we see a big trade go down before the draft or actually during the draft tonight? 
there will be a lot of conversation and speculation around those ideas. Now, the names you need to know that will walk the stage tonight in Brooklyn, hearing their names called early and often. Lottery picks, the odds associated, and who will go first overall to the Atlanta Hawks. That's what we'll discuss when Hour 2 starts after the break. Welcome to hour number two on this Wednesday live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. He is Donnie right side. I am Ben Stevens. In this second hour, we get you set for the 2024 NBA draft round number one on this Wednesday. Round two as we split the two rounds in the NBA draft now into a two night event comes your way on a Thursday. Donnie, we talked about the draft order, some of the big storylines from a team perspective that you need to know entering the association draft tonight. Now, here are the prospects and the odds that follow suit. Zachary Rizache is now the hefty odds on favorite near a $4 minus money price at minus 390 to be first overall. Yesterday, minus 270. Just about a week and a half ago, it was his French countryman, Alexander Saar, who was the odds on minus money favorite to go first overall to Atlanta. A lot of the conversation in BK the last 48 hours was the fact that Saar never worked out for the Atlanta Hawks, but he is the heavy favorite to be the second overall selection made by the Washington Wizards. Now at minus 700. Reed Shepard, after his only year at Kentucky, an odds-on favorite greater than two bucks to go third overall to the Houston Rockets. Steph Castle, Modest Buzelis, also minus money favorites to go fourth and fifth respectively. Donnie, the first five picks in the top 10 that you see there all have a minus money price From that point on, plus money numbers, some value, and some uncertainty on the odds board. And typically, as you enter into a draft, you know exactly who that number one draft pick is going to be. And it's certainly getting in that direction here with Risa Shea at a minus 390 price at the FanDuel Sportsbook. There's a lot of intrigue, though, from two on out at this point of where some of these guys should go. So it's almost when you say on one hand, well, this draft doesn't have a lot of solidified talent up top that you can guarantee should be a top two, top three, top four pick in this draft, which adds to the intrigue when actually watching the draft play out. Because you'll probably get some surprises that you think, and you don't know how some of these draft boards turn out from organization to organization that's going to be the fun part to watch tonight but I do think sometimes you just have to agree with where the odds are moving where it was when we first started looking at the draft it was SAR number one by a long shot and now he's no longer that super that favorite by a long shot he's actually the long shot it feels like now to go number one overall so just some added intrigue on the draft coming up but I do think just looking at the odds here usually the odds get it correctly here and Risa Shea going number one looks like that's going to be a formality 14 international players have been picked first overall in the history of the NBA draft in its common era, including as recently as Victor Wembanyama last year. It would seem to be that trend will reach 15 years. At least two players internationally have been selected in the top 10 in each of the last 11 NBA drafts. I would expect that to continue early and often on this Wednesday evening. Again, Zachary Rizache, now the hefty odds on favorite minus 390 to be that first overall pick the second best odds not even Alex Saar Donovan Klingon the big man who won two national championships of course with Connecticut one of the things that stands out about Klingon's numbers DRS he has the second best price to be the first third fourth fifth and seventh overall selections and yet is not a favorite to be any of the top 10 picks that we see in the NBA draft It is interesting because typically you'd say to yourself, okay, if we're looking at the number one overall pick odds here, Risa Shea is a heavy favorite at minus 390, but the guy second in line is Donovan Klingon at a plus 450 price. You go, oh, well, if it doesn't go one, then Ben, he's definitely going two. And then you look at the number two overall picks here at minus 750 for Saar. And then you see Donovan Klingon at a 20 to one with two guys in front of him. Technically, Reed Shepard at a tie with him, but also Risa Shea at a plus 750 price. So it's just odd the way yeah. the pricing is actually working out where you figure if you're second in line to be number one pick, you should be second over on the draft. But different teams and different draft boards have different needs. That's why you're getting that change up here for us. Donovan Klingon is a minus 390 favorite to be a top five pick. We'll see if there is some maneuvering or how exactly that plays out tonight. So Donnie has made this point a few times, and I do think it is fair in context and comparison to recent NBA drafts. 
in 2024, we don't really have that star power. We don't really have that large storyline in terms of the prospects of who's going to go number one overall or a rich draft class but it still should be exciting and there will be many talking points tonight again our sports grid nba draft special starts at 8 p.m eastern time myself kevin walsh and the coach james young jy who you will hear from on this wednesday on the early line so now we get donnie's assessment on the storylines that we have for the 2024 nba draft we had a ton of fun getting ready for the NBA Finals in a similar segment, rating a storyline from 1 to 10. 10 being wildly intriguing, 1 being, eh, who cares? So let's start with the first storyline, Donnie. Rate the storyline. The NBA draft shifting to a two-day format. It's a, basically a one at this point, and you probably couldn't have picked a worse <laughs> draft to actually have a two-day, which, you know, for, put it this way, Ben, in my mind, you don't even have a 25-minute draft at this point here. You're going to want to see who's number one just because that's interesting, and shout out to the boys putting in some hard work in that studio tonight because you are going to put in that work just to try to keep eyeballs on that show, and for good reason. That's why the talent's in the studio tonight, but having said that, Risa Shea goes one, and you go, oh, okay, that's great. And maybe they said, well, we're going to put on two days because Bronny's probably going to go day number two. If you check some of the numbers now at the FanDuel Sportsbook on where Bronny James is going to go, there could be a chance Bronny James doesn't even go on day number two at this point. There is no need for day number two at this point for the NBA draft. So the fact that they have a two-day draft and try to hype that up there, missing the point, especially this year, one of the worst drafts probably in my lifetime. We used to fly through the second round, two minutes on the clock for each team selecting. Now it's been up to four minutes as we have made the NBA draft, much like the NFL draft, a Man. media and television event. But oftentimes, even in the day two or day three, you will have significant players selected for your favorite NFL franchise. Since 1989, only 21 second round picks have made an NBA All-Star team. Of course, there have been some notable second-round selections in the last decade. Draymond Green with the Golden State Warriors and probably no more so than Nikola Jokic, who was selected 41st overall by the Denver Nuggets and is a three-time NBA MVP. I do actually think if there was a draft to try to extend into a second round, tomorrow night becomes the Bronny James show. When will he be drafted? His draft position prop has gotten drastically later and later over the last <laughs> five or six days. 54 and a half with the over having the hefty juice now for Bronny James. What should stand out? The Lakers have a second round pick at number 55 overall. So now to our second storyline. Rate the storyline 1 to 10. There being no clear cut number one prospect, which could make for some intrigue at the top. Is that Donovan Klingon? On the screen? Looks like it, yeah. Maybe he's the, maybe that's a the subliminal message bet, right there. I, that Donovan I, I, could I number swear one that was Alex Caravan. Point. I ah, swear that was Alex. Could, maybe, a, I got to go see on the Or maybe it was Hurley's back. kid. Okay. You should have put Hurley's kid up there. Undefeated. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Me yeah. Oh, it's Look it's at clean. that. It's clean. My mistake. My mistake. Just want to make there sure. There you go. Clinging celebration up here at All this right, point. So but yeah, I don't know. The, um, so I'm rating the storyline based on the draft is so bad. It's actually good that there's no o number one overall option. It's kind of intriguing. <laughs> so I'm going to go number one on rate that storyline as well. The whole point of the draft is you want to tune in okay. to see that superstar player. We knew Webb and Yama was going to be number one last year. We still tuned in just to be a part of that story and see how tall he actually is and dapping it up with the commissioner. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now. If I am awake here, because I got to be up t very early tomorrow no, for not. a studio special. Yeah. Let me tell you this. If they say, if I have it on mute and the number one pick goes off, Ben, and that guy walks out on stage, I might not. I, I honestly, I don't even know who the guy is. Like, I don't know if I could, like, you know, Webb and Yama. Oh, that's Victor Webb and Yama's right. highlights. If Risa Shea comes out right. first, I couldn't tell if that's Sara Risa Shea. Honest to God. So that tells you on yeah. a one story rating here for that. Yeah, that, exactly. That's, that's good work. Can we get a storyline yeah. above a one? Quickly, DRS, all the attention to Bronny James. That's a 10 right there because a guy that shouldn't be in the NBA is going to get drafted. You know, make a wish foundation tonight. Hey, everybody gets oh, dreams coming God. through. Take it to the break. Time for a pick six for the 2024 NBA draft. We go across the draft 
in many betting markets to give you some of our favorite wagers for tonight's opening round and beyond in the 2024 NBA draft. I am very excited for this. I know Donnie's enthusiasm for this 2024 NBA draft is incredibly high. He gave one of the storylines, Bronny James and all the attention paid to him, a 10. That means incredibly exciting. All right, Donnie, let's start with our pick six here. Here is the category. Our favorite to be the number one pick. A top 10 pick draft price that we like. A team to watch. Will Bronny be drafted by the LA Lakers? Yes or no? A best bet in who we overall will be believe will be the best pro in terms of their development in the NBA. So let's start with the pick six and who you think is going first overall. Yeah, it's got to be Reese Shea. And again, it's not it has to do with any breakdown here for myself saying, boy, I really think he fits in perfectly with the Atlanta Hawks or what it might be. But I'm an oddsman here, and I'm going to keep to it. If you are seeing a guy rise up that draft board, that means information is leaking out that lets us know he is going to be the number one pick. So a minus 390 price is probably as good as it's going to get. And throughout this afternoon, Ben, what do we expect? 390 to 490 yeah. to 650 to 700 seven to one at that point minus 700 I should say so Reese Shea for me number one just because the odds are moving in that direction and it's been a clear indicative number for the past week and a half where that number has gotten substantially lower and I expect it to get even yeah. lower as the day moves on a few weekends ago I was over in the great state of New Jersey where you can bet the NBA draft prices in the Garden Garden State for some reason not here in the Empire State and listening to our coach JY saying that he actually thought Zachary Rizache was a better fit for Atlanta I decided to take a sprinkle plus 185 on Rizache when at that time Alex Saar was close to a minus two dollar favorite now that is completely flipped Feeling pretty good about that number. So like Donnie, I agree that Zachary Rizache will go first overall to the Atlanta Hawks. A top 10 pick, one that intrigues. Donnie is going with Ron Holland. How come? What's the breakdown? Yeah, here's the breakdown here. Like the draft, we don't have a lot of talent in. Some names I know, some names I don't know. Ron Holland is a name I have no idea. So it can't be as bad as some of the guys that I've watched in college basketball or the guys coming from overseas. So my simple handicap is I don't know much about this guy, but he can't be any worse than what we're seeing out here that's going to be drafted tonight. Ron Holland, (laughs) minus 105, top 10 draft pick. How about that analysis? Uh, You know, I got to love that analysis. I'm sure Kevin Walsh would love to hear that here on the day of the NBA draft. Ron Holland is a name that maybe just trickled to the back of your mind because he was the number two overall recruit for the 2024 class collegiately, a consensus five-star prospect that originally had committed to Texas before going to the now defunct G League Ignite where he averaged nearly 20 points a game in the games that he played this year for G League Ignite don't mind the move minus 105 on Ron Holland would not be surprised to see him in the top 10 I'm taking a sprinkle Zach Eady plus 250 for the two-time reigning national player of the year in men's college basketball I really believe if the year was 1984 or 1994, Zach Mm. Eady would be a $5 odds-on favorite to be the number one overall selection. But things look a little bit different on the hardwood now. I do believe in the development of Zach Eady and the fact that I think he's going to have a successful NBA career. The shot has already improved. I know it is going to. Agile, nimble for his 7'4 frame, and I believe he can be a game changer in the post. Zach Eady, plus 250 to be a top 10 pick. I'll give you my best bet on Zach Eady, but I'm convinced, Donnie, he is a lottery pick in the 2024 NBA draft. And I would not be surprised, and I think it's worth the sprinkle on a plus 250 number if he goes in the top 10. Yeah, and why not at this point, right? And also, when sometimes you get lucky with when you're coming out, this is the perfect draft for Zach Eady to come out so you can actually be in that lottery and possibly a top 10 pick. Because who's going to get mad at this? What Zach Eady comes to your team. What do you know, Ben? exactly what you're getting a kid that competed at the highest level is absolutely dominant the best player in college basketball you know he's gonna have a solid work ethic and who can't use a big man at some points in the game now granted is he a three and d guy at that size gonna be able to run the court like donovan Klingon? no but you know exactly what you have and there's minutes for a player like that in the nba who's like zach Eady comes in the nba is he gonna be out in two or three years no he probably has a seven eight nine year career just being an active big that has some moves and can score points 
It would be just the third lottery pick for Purdue since 1994. Glenn Robinson went first overall that year to Milwaukee. Jaden Ivey three years ago now in 2022 going fifth overall to Detroit. I do believe that is going to be the case for Zach Eady. A team to watch for you, DRS, either moving up or down the draft board tonight. Yeah, it's the Philadelphia 76ers. The reason I bring that up is not only because I enjoy watching the Sixers, but there's a lot of intrigue going around them. No moves to be made yet. Who are they going to use for that number three spot here so you can sort of apply another superstar to that roster? But there's a lot of question marks going on. Did the Philadelphia 76ers package that 16th pick here and move it up or down and also use that 16th pick to bring in another starter here that could be a max contract guy in the mix? So I'm interested to see if the Sixers actually are making that pick at 16 or they flip that one over and say, you know what? We already have our guys that we're ready to have as ingrained starters and players across the league. That's what I'm watching for tonight. I want to see if they actually make that pick at 16. For me, the team to watch is the San Antonio Spurs. Last year, they won the sweepstakes. They drafted Victor Wembanyama. It was the third time in franchise history San Antonio had drafted first overall Tim Robinson, or Tim Robinson, Tim Duncan, David Robinson, the Admiral, as it Emerging. was. And for the franchise improvement that followed for both Tim Duncan and David Robinson, I thought the Spurs were going to have a better year just 22 and 60, but Wemby did come on down the home stretch of the regular season. Outside of that, only one other time has San Antonio drafted in the top four. They select fourth tonight. They also have the eighth pick. This is the building block for the future for San Antonio. Could they package those picks to maybe get a bona fide star right now? Hello, Trey Young. Are they going to use mm. both of those picks to maybe make selections that they can pair with Victor Wembanyama to set a future of success in San Antonio? Now we have the Bronny James conversation on the other side as the pick six continues live right here on the early line. Pick six in the NBA getting after it and having some fun here. Now, granted, the NBA draft is tonight. The Sports Grid Network, we got it covered up and down. Everything you need to know, the boys will be live in studio, rocking and rolling and ready to go. And I joke about the NBA draft tonight, like my interest level. But if I am going to do one thing tonight, it's not watch network television for the draft. It's the boys in studio chopping it up, having fun, going live throughout the draft and giving you that instant impact for what you need. Like me. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, that's a decent breakdown. You'll get that tonight Thank on the you. Sports Grid Networks. Make sure you guys tune in there, BSS. I know you'll do a great job tonight live from New Jersey. DRS, you know that means the world to me. However, I feel your words are false as the draft special starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. And knowing we are going to be in studio tomorrow together in New Jersey, and that's a 3 a.m. wake up for you, I don't expect you to be up. But if you are at 8 p.m. Eastern, make sure you tune in to Sports Grid's NBA draft special, which will continue, by the way, with a special in-studio look on Thursday for round number two. Of course, a two-night mm. event now in the NBA draft. And a ton of the attention on Thursday will be on Bronny James. Is he drafted? Where is he drafted? In which team does he go to? So we continue the pick six with a simple question. Will Bronny James be drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers? Absolutely, he's going to be drafted by the Lakers. And that right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook, it's a minus one, excuse me, minus 145 price for him to get drafted by the Lakers. That is a great bet. And if you're just looking at correlations here, the reason I said yes, and I'm emphatic about it. And again, it's not a handicap on LeBron James himself. It's just looking at the optics. When we're taking a look at last week, his draft status, let's just call it somewhere around that 40 range, 40 and a half, right? Will he go over or under? It was going to be interesting to see where that market moved because it went lower. It didn't mean necessarily that the Lakers were going to take them. It means other teams are going to be interested, and we might have, and a bidding war is the wrong thing to say, but you might have, let's just say, two or three teams going, you know what? We'll spend a draft pick here. I know the Lakers and or the Phoenix Suns and or somebody else might draft him. We might have to slide up and take him now when we thought he probably should go a little bit later in the draft. But now we're seeing his draft stock slip, which means that he probably has already had a team that goes, we are selecting you here, and has shut the door on everybody else. And the reason this is interesting, Ben, overall is because this isn't the normal draft board. This is Rich Paul, maybe most of the impactful agents in the NBA that let it be known two weeks ago. If you're going to draft this guy, he's not going to the G League. He's going to have a one-way right. contract. 
You're going to pay this guy. He's an NBA roster. If not, don't draft him here. So the fact that his status is going down, down, which means other teams are going like, well, we might have drafted him in the second round, but we wanted to develop him and put him in the G League. That really only leaves yep. one team left that's going to be okay to having him as the 15th guy on the roster on a night-to-night basis. That's the Lakers. Minus 145. I love that bet at the FanDuel Sportsbook, and I just took that over the commercial break. We have seen the odds on Bronny James, who was one of five players for this 2024 NBA draft class to even have a draft position prop over under. When we showed it to you for the first time late last week, it was 40 and a half. The over had the juice. It is now dropped by 14 draft position slots to 54 and a hook. The over has the juice at minus 158. Why is that number convenient? The Lakers have one second round pick and it's at number 55 overall. So there's your bet. Minus 145 to the Lakers. There's a pick ban bet you can make on Bronny James. 51 to 55 at minus 140, including selection number 55 overall. That's how I would bet Bronny James because he will be a Los Angeles Laker. If he is not, I do not believe that he is drafted in 2024. I wish I had the cojones to be like Donnie Wrightside and say that my best bet for the 2024 NBA draft was a 20 to 1 number. And that's why DRS is here. Who is it and what's the bet? Yeah, it's going to be Donovan Klingon. And I like this pick because he's not particularly supposed to go number two. But in a draft where we're unsure of who that top five is going to be, and he's been nothing but rising the board over the past couple weeks here, why can't he be the number two overall pick at this point? And also, when you're looking at price points, yeah, give me a best bet at a minus 175 or a minus 225. Like, no, go for the gusto in this one. It would not surprise me if Donovan Klingon goes number two overall. And that's a good price point at 20 to one. We'll talk about this next in our Fade the Public poll happening a little bit earlier on mm-hmm. this Wednesday. I think Donovan Klingon has a chance to be the best pro out of this NBA draft, as we'll show you on the pick six. But my best bet, that's Zach Eady under 15 and a half. That draft position prop no longer there, but it was yesterday afternoon. The under had the juice. Now the over has the juice on the up- updated prop of 14 and a hook. Of course, the first 14 picks... That's the NBA draft lottery in the opening round. Zach Eady is going to be a lottery selection. We hear from you about this NBA draft class up next. Welcome back to the early line here into hour number two of a Wednesday on TEL across the Sports Grid Network, but not just any ordinary Wednesday. It is draft day in the NBA. Round number one of the 2024 NBA draft is tonight. So we wanted to hear, of course, from the people out there. You have heard Donnie and my assessment on how we think this draft is going to look here in 2024. Now it's time to hear from you. Who's going to be the best pro when all is said and done? Not where they are picked or by what team, but who is the best pro prospect in this 2024 draft class? That was the question to you and Fade the Public. This could be a sign of one of two things. One, this poll is a little bit earlier than when we normally do it to start off hour number three. Or, like Donnie has alluded to, there's not a ton of care or attention being paid at this moment to the 2024 NBA draft because of how this draft class is perceived. At SportsGrid, though, which 2024 NBA draft prospect will have the best NBA career? Only 75 votes. Not what we want to see. Alexander Saar listed, Donovan Klingon listed, Zachary Riza Shea, or other if you selected other we hoped for a reply which way did you vote drs now let's go with my daily you know retweeting and picking like usually on the lazy end of it you see the twitter poll come up you don't want to think too much about it you want to say you know give me the impulse decision right away so i'm with donovan Klingon. hit the replay hit the uh you know retweet button got it out there for the people but that's not really the thought process behind me because i do have another guy i just wasn't going to write in a name when I hit like the quote tweet, like I want to keep it the same, keep it simple. But also, right. I do think you take a look at this draft and people are like, man, Saar Risa Shea, I have no idea. Oh, I watched Donovan Klingon play college basketball. He's a pretty good player. Yep, there you go. 39% of the votes coming in on Donovan Klingon. That's why he's leading the way at this point. It would have been interesting. I don't, even if you would put anybody else, or at least like in a 
American collegiate player if that would have changed up the discussion. But I just think people saw like, yeah, I know Klingon. He's a good player. I'll go that route on a national championship team back to back. I think that's why most of the votes are going Klingon's way this early. Yeah, I would think so. I think when you look at what is recognizable for most of our public, the French guy's not really getting all that much consideration, despite the fact that Zachary Rizache and Alexander Saar are more than likely to go 1-2 in that order. Rizache to the Atlanta Hawks at number one overall, and Saar to the Washington Wizards at second overall. At least that's what the odds say right now. Rizache minus 390 to be that first overall pick. SAR minus 750, the updated number to go second overall. I think Donovan Klingon, as I shared in the pick six, has a chance to be the best pro out of this class. I think we are starting to see a rejuvenation, if you want to call it that, but a rejuvenation, although an updated big man era in the NBA. The days of the guys on the block dominating with physical presence like Shaq, Tim Duncan, not necessarily what we are seeing here in this updated era. But think about the last four MVPs, three of them, Nikola Jokic, who can do everything, and Joel Embiid, not all that far behind. Will either of the guys we are discussing, Donovan Klingon, Alex Saar, who is listed at seven foot, kind of model that frame? I'm not entirely sure. Those are very high expectations. But I do believe it's 7-2. Donovan Klingon's game is only going to evolve during his time in the NBA. As we saw year over year in his two years in stores. Two years that ended as a national champion. Especially as the anchor of the team in the 2023-24 campaign. The shooting is going to evolve. The mobility is there. He is a defensive game changer already in what he can do to protect the rim and the glass. And I had a little bit of fun as well because I put a gif in there of Zach Eady hammering down a dunk. I am convinced and I am pretty sure this is going to happen based on the odds that Eady is going to be a lottery pick. I think there's a good chance he can be a top 10 pick, a plus 250 number. I really do believe Zach Eady is not just going to be the 7'4 big guy that we all remember for college basketball and some of us got very mad at in the way that he was officiated throughout the NCAA tournament, but that he will be a successful pro for many years to come in the association. Yeah, as long as he stays healthy, right? Because sometimes, you know, big men, you get those feet issues, you get sure. the knee issues, you get the back issues. But there's no reason to believe he can't stick around for at least five to seven years in the NBA because there's always a need for size and there's always a need for a guy who's actually skilled with the basketball. And also keep in mind, a big guy that can make some free throws here, not just saying, hey, you know what? Got to pull him out of the game. He doesn't make any of his free throws at this point. The interesting part for me is looking at this draft overall is so many years you have that true superstar top end talent. Like, nobody would look at last yeah. year's drafting. Like, yeah, Mommy, Webinyama, I don't know where he's going to be in five years. Nobody expected to be an all-star and be one of the better players in the, basket, in the National Basketball Association. But if we're looking overall at these players, over the next five years, it's going to be interesting. Like, do we actually have an all-star player? Now, some of these games are really going to take off, and guys that we didn't expect to be fantastic just might be fantastic. But it's one of those drafts where I look at, look, I don't know we're going to be here in five years with a guaranteed all-star appearance out of one of these guys. So just to bring up to your yeah. point there on Zach Eady, I do think it makes a lot of sense because sometimes you go into a draft and all you're looking to do is hit on upside, right? Like this guy has all the intangibles. If he works out great, if he doesn't, it's really no big deal. But there is something to be said about drafting a player that you know exactly what you're getting the minute that he gets into camp. And that's what we have that luxury with if you're looking at Zach Eady. I mean, when you look at the last five years of who that number one overall pick has been, it's been a pretty solid run. Victor Wembanyama last year, has he already he won rookie of the year right that's already been given out yeah Victor yeah. Wembanyama won rookie of the year this season as was expected a generational talent that was touted in the vein of LeBron James selected first overall 20 years prior and by the time all was said and done Wemby had adjusted to the NBA and was sensational in the final 25 to 30 games for San Antonio this past season in his rookie campaign prior to that the number one overall pick, Paolo Bancaro in 2022, also won Rookie of the Year. Cade Cunningham, 
was the first overall pick in 2021. Now, as that stands, still some unfulfilled promise at this point in Detroit with a very shaky organization at the moment. But Kate's been pretty darn good for the Pistons. Anthony Edwards, an emerging superstar the year prior, and Zion Williamson Mm -hmm. back in 2019. The first overall picks have come with notoriety and have delivered at least early in their NBA careers. Yes, Zion Williamson still has a lot that he is capable of and his availability has been a part of the conversation around his NBA career. Cade Cunningham hasn't taken the lead by storm, but three of the other five have been darn good early on in their NBA careers. Will Zachary Rizache live up to that billing? Who's to say? We can only project and evaluate what we have right now. But I think that's why, Donnie, and you look at who is behind Riza Shea, this draft lacks a little bit of that luster. It does not mean there is not storylines and conversation pieces and some potential prospects that could make immediate impacts and pay off in the long-term dividends of the franchises that take them. It's just that it doesn't have all the notoriety that we have seen the last five years or so. No, it doesn't. And also, when you're taking a look at projections here, a few you think can be great. Reed Shepard's one of those guys that you know didn't take college basketball by storm, but was a quality player. Now, the expectations for Reed Shepard going to the NBA is what can he do right away? Let's make the three-point shot, and that's going to be huge. I believe he shot over 50% last year from the three-point line. There's always a spot, just like I talk about Zach Eady, always a spot for a big guy who can actually use his fouls to his advantage and score. Reed Shepard, if he's a quality three-point shooter, there's no reason to believe he won't be there. That's a guy that can stick around for quite some time in the NBA. So when I look at Reed Shepard going to a team, whoever he goes to, nobody's going to say, like, I don't really know we can fit you in at. A guy that can absolutely shoot it, there's always need in the NBA. So I went with Reed Shepard there, as I think it's going to be a quality prospect here as well. Minus 210, the price right now for Reed Shepard to be the third overall pick. The Rockets hold on to that number at this moment. And again, as we always say, the draft caveat from the draft odds, if Reed Shepard goes third, but somebody else other than Houston makes the pick, still cash that ticket.